So um, Nick, Nick just mentioned about the importance of our uh, reference methodological um, documentation, which is international recommendations for energy statistics. In short, we call it IRES. So it is adopted by United Nations um, Statistical Commission in 2011, and it defines the comprehensive framework, uh, for example, the scope of energy classification units and methods, as well as um, data collection, institutional arrangement, quality assurance, and dissemination. So we really highly um, encourage all the people around the world uh, that are involved in energy statistics field to refer and to follow the, this, the IRS guidelines. The link, are unseen, uh, the link is seen below, so you can always um, um, search for that. So let me begin with the scope of our energy statistics. What's the boundary of our energy statistics? So um, the couple of um, bullet points are listed here. Uh, first, I'd like to mention the energy products. So uh, what is the energy products? Uh, as we all know, um, this is the forms of energy suitable for direct use or products that release energies uh, while undergoing um, combustions or other process. Uh, the thing I'd like to highlight here is that uh, this is the form that we directly use, uh, that we practically use. Uh, what does that mean? So um, let me give you one example. When it comes to the wind energy, uh, we don't measure uh, the kinetic energy of the wind. Uh, instead, we measure the electricity production from the wind turbine. So this is our measuring point. This is the um, measurable uh, fuel as electricity form uh, that we want to include in our energy statistics. And the second bullet is mentioning about energy flows. This refers to the various activities of economic sectors uh, in the national territory. It can be a production or trade uh, or um, transformation or final um, consumption by the end users. So all the flows are defined uh, based on IC classification, which is International Standard Industrial Classification, which you will see again in the later slides. And among these uh, energy flows, um, there are two uh, flows that I want to highlight here. One is the production. So production here is very important because this is our starting point. This is our measuring point uh, where our energy statistics begins. So um, uh, it is very important to note that only the marketable production should be included in the energy statistics. In energy statistics. For example, let me give you one example of um, coal. So um, once, um, um, so there is a coal that needs to be washed to remove the impurities such as the soil or other ores. Then um, after removal of all of these impurities, after washing this coal, we report this washed coal in the, uh, as a coal fuel in our energy statistics because that is the, in the marketable status. Um, next bullet is about energy sector. Uh, this, is very, um, this has very prominent role um, in our energy um, statistics because we are dealing with energy here and all the um, transformation and the production and distribution uh, begin with the ener this energy sector flows. So you will see uh, later um, a couple of different uh, uh, players in the energy sector. Uh, so I will um, give it, uh, I will go a little bit more deep in detail uh, there. And last point is the reference territory. What does that mean? We are only interested in, in uh, what's occurring in the national territory. So it is very important to uh, to be aligned with this concept because. Uh, this, is very related, uh, this is related to the uh, security of energy supply, for example. So this information is very um, key to, um, the, to, uh, to make uh, energy, energy policies, for, uh, for example. So under, uh, assuming that we understand all of this, what's included and what should be excluded in our energy statistics, uh, let's solve a short quiz prepared here. So I'd like to introduce uh, to, uh, to, uh, to question one. I'm happy to invite you to the mentee.com. Uh, 
I'm sure that uh, you learn how to use it in our housekeeping rule session. I'd like to, uh, I'd like you to go to the menti.com and use the code uh, 5787-4799. So uh, what I want to ask you here is what's, uh, what's included in our national energy statistics and balances and what shouldn't be uh, included here. There are um, six options here, uh, but you can uh, select more than one options. I see a warm participant um, um, giving an answer to us. Uh, natural gas, there are five options, uh, six options. Natural gas used for heating, solar energy reaching earth, methane emitted while mining coal, fuel load burnt for cooking, electricity used while traveling abroad, which we don't really do right now because of pandemic. And lastly, um, natural gas used as uh, ammonia feedstock. Okay, there are more than 20 participants um, giving the answer. Um, we are seeing more and more um, clear um, target or the pool of answers right here for the first, fourth and sixth options. Okay, I see uh, almost like 30 participants giving yes sir, so uh, let me give you the answer. Right, still coming, yeah. Okay. Thank you for your really like heated participation. Um, so let's um, share the answer all together. So the answer so are these three, like natural gas used for heating and fuel wood burnt for cooking and natural gas used as ammonia feedstocks. Um, I, I think like almost most of you already like uh, gave the correct answers. Uh, then let's take a look at what shouldn't be included in our energy statistics and balances. First is the solar energy reaching the earth. I saw some of you um, selected um, this option, but this is not the answer because uh, first, uh, we cannot actually or practically track how much energy the earth absorbs uh, from, the so from the sun, for example. And um, if you remember the boundary of our energy statistics in the previous slide, uh, we need to define, uh, define um, uh, what's the energy product we want to, uh, we want to collect the, uh, the data on. So, so the, the, in case of the solar energy, uh, we'd rather measure the electricity generated from the solar PV, solar panel, instead of the whole energy coming from the sun. For the methane emitted or fugitive um, um, while mining coal, this is very important data actually. But as mentioned earlier, um, this is not a, a marketable status. So this is not included in our energy statistics and balances. But I'd like to highlight that this data, of course, is very important to, for example, to track on uh, the greenhouse gas emissions, et cetera. So the, uh, from environmental point of view, uh, this data would be better to be collected, but not mandatory uh, to be included in our energy statistics. And lastly, electricity used while traveling abroad. Uh, there is uh, one um, scope um, mentioned earlier, which is the uh, territory reference. So. Uh, for example, um, electricity while we travel abroad, uh, that consumption should be included in the in the nation that uh, the actual consumption occurs. So this should be uh, out of our scope. So how to bring all energy statics together? 
The answer is here, uh, the energy balance. So the energy balance is the synthesis of all kinds of information. We collect gas, electricity, coal, oil, and renewable data. And then we synthesize all together in the one piece of paper uh, that shows uh, the whole picture of the national energy situation. Uh, I put here the, the quote from our IRS. Uh, this is the, an accounting framework for compilation of data on all, all energy products entering, exiting, and used within the national territory of a given country during a reference period. So based on this information, we can see which color uh, this house is having or which shape uh, this house uh, is, um, looks like. So this is very, uh, very important um, information that everyone has to uh, work on. Then let's have a look like how the energy balance look like. So energy balance is a two dimension matrix that are composed of uh, products and flows. First, let's take a look at um, the columns. So the columns are, are um, showing us the commodity itself uh, by product. Here we see um, from coal um, to oil products, natural gas and hydro. And uh, this is quite aggregated level, but this can go into a more disaggregated level if there is a data. And if you look at the horizontal uh, row, then it defines the flows of uh, uh, energy, the energy that goes through uh, across, the, across the sections from production, uh, below that the trade and stock changes, and below that um, oil refineries, etc. And the beauty, the really like the most beauty of this energy balance is that it is balanced, uh, arithmetically balanced, uh, like horizontally and also vertically. So we can actually read uh, horizontally or vertically, and we observe that all the numbers here are balanced out at the end of the day. And to do that here, we um, for the comparability, we used one single unit here. Uh, in this case, we used the KTOE, kilotons of oil equivalent, to compare each product, uh, each flows um, simultaneously. And, and last point, uh, there is a one column uh, that is called total, and it defines the total energy. So yeah, this is very important information, uh, especially when you derive the further indicators you can, you can use this total column as a key information. So um, first let's take a look at the products columns. So uh, as mentioned earlier, it is based on the uh, standard classification of in international energy products. And um, I put here the, the table uh, that is introduced in the IRS, uh, which, uh, which shows us the whole energy products that we are interested in. So it really, it, go, it is composed of several levels. On the very upper levels, like there is a, a 10 sections from coal to nuclear fuels, and, and it can go uh, more disaggregate level. For example, uh, it also defines the under the coal, anthracite, bituminous coal, coking coal, and other bituminous coal and socket minus coal and lignite, et cetera, et cetera. And on, if you look at on the uh, right-hand side of the table, we also see that um, there are like matching of the code uh, towards the other very famous code, which is which are CPC version two or HS code. So you can actually like compare with each other and you can also um, correlate uh, when you transfer from one system of code to the another. And let's take a look at um, what we have in rows. So it's the energy, um, it's the energy flows that I mentioned uh, in the in the in the in the first session in the first slide. So there are three main blocks here. First, it's a supply. Supply is composed of production, trade, 
international bankers and stock changes. And below that, we see that transformation and energy sector. And lastly, the final consumption sectors. And uh, some of you uh, hear that supply versus demand then. Here, demand refers to the combination of transformation and energy sector and final consumption sector. So uh, let's take a little more detail the what's the energy supply blocks. So it is compri uh, comprised of like production, trade, and uh, this is very high level information. So based on this, uh, we can make a table as you seen as you see here, this is this is the table from our one of our products, which is key world energy statistics. So based on um, production and trade data, uh, in case of crude oil, we can um, list uh, the countries, uh, who is the producer of crude oil, who is the net exporters of crude oil, and who is the net importers of crude oil. And very key, flows um, is shown here, which is total energy supply. Uh, we call it TES. So this is very, um, very important indicators. Uh, I would say this is the first estimation of the how much energy is demand, how much energy is, is needed for the country uh, to prosper. So here, one graph shown here, uh, world total energy supply by geographical region. So this is very uh, high level information that and they're really um, interesting. Let's, let's go to the second block, uh, which is transformation and energy sectors. Uh, this is our engine of our energy balance. So here we report um, what's the energy uh, that goes into our uh, power plants, for example, to produce another uh, type of energy. In this case, uh, there is a coal pump coal power plant uh, shown here. When we, put in, uh, when we put coal as an input to coal power plant, we, uh, we report that with a negative sign, um, meaning that this amount of coal is input to the coal fired power plant. And at the end of the table, we see uh, also the output uh, from these coal power plants. And from this, uh, we can actually calculate the efficiency of the power plant. Uh, there is also very important uh, indicators uh, for us to when, when you process the data because it shows the data quality checks. Of course, the type of technologies and, and other policies uh, vary across the uh, nation. So energy efficiency might vary, but um, there are a certain range of um, efficiencies, expected efficiencies. So we can actually uh, validate if the reported data are, prop, uh, are correct or not. Um, at the second block, like there are two, um, two sectors actually I, I'd like to distinguish. And I also want to point out because uh, this is the questions that, uh, that have been asked like so many times uh, from the users. So at the second block, there are two um, sections. One is transformation and energy uh, energy own use. So uh, giving you example, we'd be a little bit uh, clearer to understand the concept here. So transformation, uh, we have here the oil refineries plants and we input crude oil to produce the oil products such as gasoline or the other LPG. And let's say, um, the crude oil that is transformed into another um, secondary, secondary oil product, we call this process as a transformation. However, we certainly need a certain amount of fuel uh, that helps to run the machines and to, uh, to operate the equipment. Here, uh, fuel oil is used to run the operation. So in this case, fuel oil is considered as an energy industry own use not a transformation. And we have a last block, which is final consumption. So that are composed of many of many industry, many uh, users, energy users. Um, there are industry sectors as well here. This is aggregated as just one industry, but there are more disaggregated level based on the uh, IC code. 
and you can see a uh, transport sector and we see the residential commercial sectors agriculture fishing and non-energy use uh, one thing that, that that i'd like to highlight here is the transport sector uh, because this is the sector uh, that is independently of the economic sector itself. So we really want to uh, focus on uh, the transport uh, energy consumption itself. So for example, if, the, um, if, if there is a truck that, that are using the gasoline at the construction site, uh, that amount of fuel should be included in, our, in the transport sector, but not in the construction flows, because we only want to focus on uh, how much fuel is consumed by the means of transport. And lastly, like we see the non-energy use, there is a certain things that we need to remember. First, like fuel, if the fuel is used as a raw material, uh, it should be included under uh, within the non-energy use flows. One example is bitumen. So if bitumen is used to produce the asphalt to pave the road, it goes under the non-energy use. Same for other um, uh, petrochemical uh, process, for example, naphtha. If it is used to produce uh, other plastic or petrochemical products, uh, then it goes under the non-energy use. And the second bullet here point out that the biomass or non-energy use of biomass is not taken into account uh, our energy statistics. This is the conventions um, that, are, that is used by uh, IRETS. So I'd like, to, I'd like you to keep in mind this concept here. This is the summary of, uh, of, of, of the energy, uh, main energy flows. So this is the same concept of the energy balance. If we see the flows from top to bottom before, here we see the flows from left to the right. So on your left side, we see the marketed production. I highlighted the marketed here because it is the starting point, measuring point that we are interested in. And we see the e export and imports, and there is a, a bunkers and stock. And on, on your right hand side, we see the demand from transformation to the total final consumption. And obviously, um, if the reporting source are different, then there, uh, there should be the statistical difference. It is very natural to have a statistical difference, uh, but at the same time, it is the key indicator uh, to tell us if the quality of data, energy data is good or bad. So um, it's, it's, not, it's not a very um, uh, annoying, uh, annoying concept. Annoying one, like if the statistical difference um, shows the uh, plus or minus, then we can identify which energy data is missing either in supply side or demand side. Uh, if you want to try uh, to visualize a little bit more beautifully, then we now have the Senki diagram here. Uh, IA website um, shows you um, this Senki diagram for all the countries. Here, the US case is shown here. Uh, it's same here, all the energy products um, starts starts the journey from the left side, and then uh, in case of crude oil, it goes through the refineries in between, and then it, uh, it ends up being used by the final consumption, uh, as we see on your uh, right hand side of the table. So here is another quick question. Believe yourself, what is the largest energy consuming sector in the world? I want to invite you to the Menti uh, quiz once again. The code is same. Uh, what do you think is the largest energy consuming sector in the world among residential, transport and industry?
I see industry like having more and more answer. Uh, just note that like the, the answer here is not based on like what's happening in last year. So pandemic, uh, the, the pandemic doesn't impact uh, the answer of this question too. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for your participation. Uh, let's go back to our presentation to share the answer with you. So surprisingly, um, yes, the answer is transport and industry, both accounting for uh, 29% in, uh, in 2018. So I, I think like some of you think that transport is not the large energy consuming sector because the pandemic uh, preventing us from traveling to abroad. Uh, that might be, I really want to uh, know what's happening actually like in 2020, we will see a couple of cyclists later. But based on 2018 data, uh, it's interesting to see that industry as well as transport sector are the largest energy consuming sector in the world. And it should be also highlighted that um, the, the service sector accounts for, accounts for 8% and 21% um, comes from the residential sector. So these, these are combined together also uh, accounts for 29%. And this is one of the fastest um, growing sectors in the world uh, right now. Okay, so now is time. It's time to uh, learn a little bit more practical information here. So uh, when we try to report data in the energy statistics table, sometimes we need a convergence. We need to convert. Uh, from, uh, from mass unit to volume or volume to energy, et cetera. So there are a lot of like variables um, depending on the countries, like there are a lot of preferred variables and units. So uh, we need to keep in mind that um, there are, um, the units are comparable, especially when you try to calculate or convert to another, uh, another uh, data. So conversions involving same variables, for example, energy to energy are fixed it's always the constant value. Uh, one example is the one gigawatt hour is always equal to 3.6 terajoule. And IA website provides you with the unit converter. The link is provided here uh, so that you can, use, uh, you can use it for your work. And there is another conversion from mass to volume. And this is the density. It varies across the fuels. It varies across the countries. So, um, the range or the, the accuracy of the data is also uh, is a key factor to contribute to the quality of the data. And lastly, we hear a lot of um, the term here, which is conversion factors. So when we try to convert from mass or volume to energies, uh, we use the calorific values. Here, uh, example of crude oil is shown, that calorific value of crude oil is ranging from 42 to 47 megajoule per kilograms. So the range, the accuracy of this net calorific value, we call it NCV, is very important to determine the quality of energy statistics. So let's take a look at a little bit more on calorific values. So here, once again, it converts from physical units to the energy units or vice versa. So caloric values defines the heat obtained from the one unit of fuel when burned. Uh, as mentioned, like um, it's very important um, key indicators uh, for the quality of the data. It vary even by the flow. For example, production or exports might have a different caloric values of the coal. Uh, so it is very uh, important to keep in mind that uh, this uh, this um, variation should be taken into account when you report the data. It also varies with the uh, with the uh, with the countries. Uh, so uh, there is always the expected ranges. So it is a good tool to validate if the data reported are uh, are correct or not. I'd like to introduce one example here to calculate 
the NCV, the net calorific value of coal production. So here's one simple case here. Uh, one country has two coal mines, A and B, and both coal mines produce the same amount of coal, but with different calorific values. How do you calculate the total calorific value of the coal production in, country, uh, in this country? Uh, the calculation is simple in this case. We can simply um, average those two and we are uh, leading us to have 22.5 megajoule per kilograms. But the real life is not always easy like this. So this lead me to show you the next menti questions. What if mine A produced 400 kilotons with 25 NCV and mine B produced 100 kiloton with the 20 megajoule per kilogram of NCV? So the code for this Manti quiz are same. Already there is one very fast uh, front runner uh, gave us one answer. Okay, it's equally distributed be between 21 and 24 option. Okay, option four is becoming more and more dominant. Okay, I see many people um, giving them the answer uh, for the uh, 24 megajoule per kilogram. Thank you very much for your participation once again. And let's see how, how do we derive this 24 megajoule uh, per kilogram. So, no point. so um, it is a uh, weighted average that we use to, cal uh, to calculate 24 megajoule per kilogram. So there are different amount of coals produced in the country. And uh, in this case, we need to use the weight uh, to take into account if the mine A here uh, has a higher quality of coal uh, with a higher amount of production, then this should be taken into account in, in, uh, in the final net calorific values. So uh, the Generic, generic formula for weighted average is it's shown here. We use the quantity, quantities and we use the calorific values. And using the um, formula here, we ended up um, with uh, 24 megajoule per kilograms. But this was the very simple case. So um, uh, if your country has a separate, for example, um, natural gas well, then uh, having all this information for each natural gas well you can um, calculate the total final net calorific value of the natural gas production. So it's coming to the end. Uh, I'd like to conclude uh, to show you the benefits of the collecting energy statistics. So it's already mentioned by Nick earlier. It's very useful uh, for the policymakers uh, to formulate, uh, for the formulation of energy policies and also to monitor the national energy securities and to, uh, for the planning of energy industries and long-term um, energy uh, plan for the, for the nation. Uh, it is also very useful, of course, for business community to track what's going on in the energy industry and the gener general public is also interested in uh, to have a better awareness of, uh, of what's uh, what, which energy and how much energy they actually use and how they contribute to have a better world. And based on this um, basic energy statistics, we can go further. We can derive uh, user-oriented indicators, which is relevant to the economic, social, and environmental dimensions. I put here the table introduced in uh, IRS uh, there are many various energy indicators to the uh, link to the economic dimensions. For example, here uh, we see the energy use per capita. We can see that this is the energy intensity 
per capita. Or we can also use, uh, we can see the uh, industrial energy, industri energy intensities or even household energy intens intensities. So depending on the need and demand of the energy policy, you can derive further this very um, economic and soci social economic indicators uh, uh, for, for your work and for your policy making. And it can be visualized. Uh, this is the uh, TES, total energy supply per population. So we can visualize how much energy is supplied uh, per capita, uh, depending on the countries. And another very important, uh, globally, it is very, uh, they are, uh, many people around the world are interested in uh, the green green greenhouse gas emission. And uh, from IEA, we are calculating the CO2 emissions based on the energy statistics that we collect. So we use the IRS guidelines, but also when, when it comes to the CO2 calculation, we use the IPCC methodologies uh, to, uh, to, get, uh, to get the CO2 emissions uh, from energy fuel consumptions. And lastly, um, Actually, like there is a more need, uh, for example, clean energy transition, SDG, etc., and it requires a little bit more detailed and this aggregate level of energy collect energy data collection. So here, one example: uh, if you are to track the energy efficiency, then we need to uh, adapt uh, the existing energy collection systems. For example, to collect the, how much energy is actually used by residential space, or uh, how much energy is actually used. For residential uh, appliances. So uh, uh, by having these more detailed and breakdown inf information, uh, we can have a, uh, uh, we can track the energy efficiencies. And this is very important because um, our collective objective as an international organizations and energy statistician is to maintain the policy relevance of energy statistics. So we collect energy statistics, statistics not just for fun, but because to be remain to be uh, remains as very relevant for the policymakers and other stakeholders that are interested in to get uh, this information. 